Pink Lamp Fam, welcome to today's video. We're testing out the brand new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Pressed Setting Powders. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have been so excited to test these out. We're gonna see in an all day wear test how this wears on my mature skin. I will end this video on a seven day wear test and we're just gonna have some fun. If you're new here, I'm Christy. I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get glow. <laughs> Let's get started. So this new Hourglass Pressed Setting Powder was something I was really looking forward to. If you're a Glam Fam sister, you know my love for powders and you know I love pressed powders versus loose powders. But if I were to choose a loose powder, Hourglass was one of my number one products. That one and Sicily, those two, and then Viseart would be another one. I did pick up the new Huda Beauty Fragrance Free version, so we will be testing that out in a different video, but I would say if you were to ask me, these are my top two setting powders and then Viseart and Syrah would be the next couple ones that I really like and then Chanel would be in that top five list. So I'm not a fan of loose powders though. I just, just for me, it's just too messy. It's too all over the place and there's something about pressed powders that really, in my opinion, set the makeup down even more. But if I really want a soft airbrush look, this Sicily one is chef's kiss probably even more than the hourglass one it's just it's expensive but it's worth it it's so good so if i were to choose a loose powder that would be the one and it's so finely milled that it looks like you have no powder on your face so this product obviously i already have on i've had it on for about eight hours now i started filming around 6 a.m this morning and let me tell you guys I'm, I'm impressed so far, but I have my thoughts on it. So continue watching. I just wanna to touch on the details before we get into the application process. And then at the end of the video, when I give you guys my final thoughts and rankings, I'll compare it to some of my other setting powders. So I do have two shades that we're gonna apply in this video. I have the medium, uh, which I do think is my perfect shade. It has more yellow undertones that we did for setting all over the face and under the eye. And then I also have the the deepest shade to bronze up the skin. So we are testing out both of those, but let's touch on these details. This does retail for 57 US dollars and you get about 0.37 ounces and 10.5 grams of product. So you're looking about $5.14 per gram. This is made in Korea and it does have a 12 month shelf life. This is a talc free sheer pressed powder that has more of a non drying formula that's supposed to instantly absorb oil while minimizing and blurring the appearance of pores. It's infused with their microspherical powders that are found in their number one best selling Vanish airbrush concealer. You guys know that is my number one concealer ever made. I don't know what I would do without that concealer. This is supposed to diffuse imperfections without settling into fine lines. This is available in five shades. I've swatched all of them for you guys in store and you might have already seen that if you're a Glam Fam sister. I did release a short during the sale time frame so you guys were able to see the five shades. And I'm so happy that you guys like that. I'm going to try to do that more often where I don't try it on but I'm just swatching it for you. Let me know in the comment section if you guys like that, but I got really good feedback on that video. So let's talk about those shades. We have translucent and that's just called translucent and that's just kind of a, it's a light leaning yellow undertone to it. But as you can see by that swatch, it is very sheer. And then the next shade would be translucent light. And that is definitely for my cooler undertone ladies that have more pink undertones. That is a sheer cool beige. And I really like that one. It kind of reminds me of Petal from Chantecaille, but Chantecaille Petal has a little bit more pigment to it, a little more coverage to it. This is very sheer. And then you also have Translucent Medium, which we will be applying in today's video. And that is a sheer natural beige, a light medium yellow undertone, I would say. Anyone from light to light medium skin tone will really like that shade. I probably wouldn't have switched it 
for anything else for all over the face. I think that was a beautiful shade. And then we have translucent tan, and that's more of a sheer golden. And then we have translucent deep, which I also will be applying as a bronzer shade later on in the video. And that is called a sheer warm brown. That one is very, very warm. Just so you guys know, it's pulling more orange undertones than I had hoped for, but you guys will get my final thoughts later. So this is vegan and cruelty free. This is non comedogenic and they are not lying because there is no coconut oil in here. So let's take a look at the full ingredient list. Again, this is talc free, which is really awesome. I know a lot of you really like talc free products and you also have like silica in there. You have synthetic fluorogite, which is synthetic mica. And you also have mica, you have boron nitrate, which you see in a lot of the airbrush powders. A lot of them have boron nitrate. Let's take a look at my up close shots of medium and uh, deep next to each other. So you guys can see what that looks like. Instead of doing foundation, I'm actually just going to kind of spot conceal with the Hourglass Vanish Concealer and use this as my concealer. Cause you guys already know this is my number one concealer ever made. But for foundation, and I'm not really doing like a foundation, but just to make sure everything's even, I'm gonna go in with the Chanel. This is the Water Fresh Tint. I did this in comparison to the CoverGirl, and by far this Chanel one is so much better. And I actually used light medium in that one, and this one's light, and I actually like the light better. And this one is just best with your hands, in my opinion. Looks a little light going on, but don't worry, once it oxidizes with my natural oils and really blends into the skin. It's so beautiful. It's just a nice way to even out the complexion if you do not want to wear makeup. So I still have, you know, discolorization popping through, but don't worry because the leftover of the concealer is going to cover that part up. So now I'm going to go in with my Vanish Airbrush Concealer. I love the shade Cotton. It's just my perfect shade, but if I want to spot conceal, I'll also use Oat which is around here somewhere, but I'd have to go find it. I think today we're just gonna use cotton. I'm just gonna pop that on. You don't need a whole lot of this, but because we're using it as foundation, I'm doing a little bit more. I'm gonna do where I have redness. Right there, you do wanna act quick with the airbrush. This also has the microspheres to really blur out the skin. I personally like doing it with a sponge this particular concealer, I feel like just goes on so beautifully with a sponge. This is my favorite concealer. This is like my concealer I cannot live without. See that how pretty that is? It is without any foundation on. I mean, it just covers up so beautifully. I didn't even use anything extra. I just used whatever was left over, which is so nice. And we are going to use the darker shade as a bronzer, so I'm not going to do any type of cream contouring because I want to be able to see what that looks like on its own. We are good to go now. Let's try out these powders. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is first impression. I have not used these powders yet. So let's go in with the translucent medium. And this definitely has more of a yellow undertone. The sponge just fell out. Let's see what this little puffy puff does. A uh, little puffy puff. That's the color on the puff. This is a nice like microfiber type sponge, which is why I'm curious to see how this kind of, I want to see if I get like more coverage out of that rather than using a puff, but we'll see. It's good for little touch ups on the go too. Again, this is medium. Yeah, that's nice. It's a very, very micro thin powder. It's reminding me of the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush setting powder. Very similar and very similar colors too. Actually, let's swatch those side by side so you guys can see what that looks like. Wow, 
It is really nice. Oh my gosh, it's even nice with this little puffy thing. So when you're on the go, you can absolutely use that and you feel confident in that. I do wanna do the under eye area with this. And I bought this in the Sephora sale. I love this puff. You guys know I love my Makeup Forever one. So we're gonna try it out. I love the way it feels. We'll see how it performs or if I like it any better, but this is really nice. So we're gonna take that on to this. We're gonna set the under eye now. Oh. Oh. Oh my, that's really nice. Oh, she's pretty. Oh my gosh. I know this is expensive, you guys. I have a little cut right there, so it's not gonna cover that up. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. It feels very luxurious on the skin, almost like that Chantecai feeling. I would explain this as like kind of a cross between Chantecai and Charlotte Tilbury. So it's a little bit more sheer than my Chantecai and my one size powder because these are full coverage foundations. But this is amazing for my ladies that don't like like a lot because this is a non-drying formula, and sometimes this could be a little too thick for some people, so I think this is gonna be really good for those of you. Like for me, I love it for setting, because I don't really use powder foundation on the rest of my face, so I like it for that, which is why I got the medium, because I have enough of the lighter powders for under the eye, but I do want it. I did want to use this anyway for under the eye. It's not gonna give me that super brightening effect like I typically like, but that's okay because we don't always have to have that. Let's take my Chica Hoda brush because I just cleaned this and I just wanna see dusting it, what that would be like. Let's take a look at that up close. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of my Ethereal Light powder and we're gonna just pop that on the under eye area. Uh, this is from Hourglass. This is their ambient powders and ethereal light. I haven't used this in a while. I love this stuff. Just taking it onto my Chica Hodo brush and we're just gonna lightly kind of just take that right there just to give like a nice natural highlight there but still keep it in the Hourglass family. Okay, um, let's try out the deep now and we'll see if it was the light. This is the darkest shade they have and I wanna see how this works out as a bronzer. But because we're using it more as a bronzer, I am not going to use the little velour puff in there. So let's use this brush from Sonia G. This is the Niji Pro. Uh, just because I wanna see, this usually picks up hourglass powders really beautifully. So I'm just gonna take that in there and show you guys what that looks like. I think this is really gonna pop just because it's really dark. So we'll see what kind of bronzer this makes. I'm gonna dust that off a little because it is more of a powdery formula. Actually, I'm just gonna kind of blend it into the bristles first. Okay, I have no idea how this is going to work out, so we're about to find out together. We're just gonna press it in right now and then we'll just kind of dust. We should be okay. Okay, so this is not gonna be like a contour shade. This is gonna be more of like a warm bronzing type shade. But I wanted to keep it compact for right now. It's a pretty way to like warm up the skin. I don't know if I like it the deep that much for this. It's a little too orange on me personally. It's just not my cup of tea, but it's not bad either. I'm just gonna take my Surratt brush and just kind of go over that a little, just to kind of blend together. This is not applying as smooth as the medium did. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit more medium and go over that a little. I just personally like the ambient powders a little bit more for this technique. So for me, I, I, I would just stick with the medium if I'm being 100 with you guys, but it is pretty, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna go a little extra mile with my strobe light and this is in the shade Brilliant. Love this shade so much. 
We're gonna take this onto this Hakahoto, and this is their 5521 brush B, their B series. I'm just gonna take that right there. Such a beautiful highlighter. I call this like the mature skin highlighter. Take a little bit on the forehead and a little bit on the chin. This is when you just don't want a whole lot, but you just want a little bit if that makes any sense. And then I just take the other brush and just kind of blend that in a little. But look at how pretty that looks. Uh, let's do a little blush action. Uh, which blush do I want to use? I think we're going to use, we're going to do the Cover FX blush. I can't find my hourglass ones. So we're going to take this shade right here. It's such a beautiful shade. And this is called Pink Delia. And it looks really pretty under uh, Happy from Rare Beauty, which we're gonna pop that on top as well. Look how beautiful that is. Ooh, love this color. My holy grail back in the days. Oh my God, I loved that shade so much. Where is Happy at? I know she's around here. Uh, I just did a short on this because I knew I wouldn't get a video out in time for the Sephora sale. I'm gonna take it onto this BK Beauty uh, 109 brush. I really like it with this brush for some reason. Oh, she's so pretty. I would say this one and Joy are my favorites so far, but I do wanna get Cheer. I know some of you got Cheer, so. Ooh, so pretty. Ay, ay, ay. And Cheer is the uh, one Selena Gomez uses. That was her own creation for herself. All right, you guys, that looks so good. All right, let's take a look at it up close and then I'm gonna go finish up the rest of my makeup and then I will see you guys at the midday check-in. Don't go anywhere because we still have my final thoughts, rankings, and we're gonna end this video with a seven day wear test. So I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, Glam Fam, so we're on day five because my midday check-in did not record. So that's where we are with that. I do have some B-roll of that day uh, when I was getting my hair done. So I'll show you guys that really quick. It wore okay. You know, obviously you guys kind of got my thoughts on that day. Day five, I'm using it with my Maybelline Skin Tint today. And usually with my Charlotte Tilbury, I have no issues. But I'm going to pull you guys in really close. And you'll see it's starting to seep into my frown lines. Now, I don't have filler. Never have. I'm 46, so it's going to happen with my skin. But with my Charlotte Tilbury, I get a much longer wear time with it. And I just feel like it is definitely more airbrushed than this powder. I'm not saying this powder is not good. We're going to try dusting it on on day eight and use a very light amount and see how I like it that way. So keep on watching all the way till the end. But for now, I am going to see you guys back in studio. All right, Glam Fam, we're back in studio and I just wanna share my final thoughts on this. So I've had this on all day and I have to say, I think I was a little more excited than I'm feeling right now, if that makes any sense. I was like sitting here trying to debate, how am I going to explain this? I think this powder is really beautiful for those who just don't want, who don't like powder, who literally just don't really want powder, but they want something to set down their makeup. There's a powder for everybody, let me put it that way. So when I do this rate card, this is just based off of my own preferences. So take it with a grain of salt. As I always say, everyone's different. We all have different skin types and preferences. I like something with just a little bit more pigment, a little bit more staying power. And for me, I don't think it beat out my number one for that. And that's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder, the original airbrush powder, right? This setting powder is truly magical. If I'm having a really bad makeup foundation try on, like a first impression or something like that, I put this on and I'm just like, whoa, magical. Now, I know a lot of people don't like talc in their products, so this is a very close comparison to it. But even then, I would say go with the Chantecaille. This for me is truly an airbrush powder. I would say, if you were talking about, Christy, give me the most airbrush powders on the market, it would be this one, Chantecaille, and then Sicily. Those are the most 
airbrush powders like this type of pigment loose powders or pressed powders on the market i think if Syrah came out with a pressed powder theirs would be one of the top airbrush powders but they don't have this type of powder right now currently hopefully they'll get that soon but if you were asking me my honest honest opinion that's kind of where i'm at with it so I know a lot of people don't like powders. They even think that Charlotte Tilbury is just too much for them. They would rather go with no powder. Then this is that perfect option because it is talc free, it's cruelty free, it's non-comedogenic, and it does give you some staying power. It is really pretty for that. Now I already kind of reapplied this a little just because I started seeing a lot of my cracks coming through. Whereas if I press this airbrush in, I get a much longer wear time with my, and I didn't even have foundation on today you guys I really just had the concealer and as you saw earlier just the Chanel water fresh tint so this typically doesn't really crease and especially set down with my Charlotte Tilbury it's just mucho perfection where this one I did see the cracks coming through so all I did was I just took the Sephora puff and I just kind of pressed this in for a touch-up and that's fine that's what this is there for I think this is a really good touch-up powder for someone like me personally but for originally setting down my makeup I love the Charlotte Tilbury it just for me it delivers what exactly what I'm looking for as for this color I just personally didn't care for it as a bronzer. It just didn't do anything for me. I would much rather use my Makeup Forever bronzer or my Surat bronzers. You guys know, like those are just my perfect bronzers. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's kind of giving me the same feels that the one size did where I just felt like there was patchiness going on. And I, I get the same thing with the one size. I don't really care for the deeper shades of the one size either. I think this is a much better, this is the transcendent light. It just does delivers just exactly what I'm looking for. Where there's no patchiness, it just gives a nice beautiful bronze to the skin. What I like about the trio is I do like the golden undertones to give you that little extra glow. So that's why I like the trio, but it is quite pricey. This is $70. So a lot of hourglass powders are, I understand because they're so good, the ambient powders are expensive and they do last a long time. So that's just kind of where I'm at. Before when there wasn't a lot of loose powder options, this was just my number one. It didn't dry me out, especially when baking was a thing. This was the only powder I was able to bake with until I got my hands on the Sicily one. And then now this one is for me a little bit better than the hourglass one, but still some of the top uh, baking powders because for someone like me with normal to very dry skin, it just works out better. Uh, I'm still kind of playing with the Huda Beauty one. I don't know where I'm at with it. I'm still kind of playing with it. We're gonna test it out in a different video because I have new Urban Decay foundation. So I'll test those out together. But that's just kind of where my thoughts are. Let's just go over my Raycart really quick. So application, I think it applied nicely. Obviously it set down the makeup beautifully at first sight. Again, it's not delivering as much pigment as I personally like. I do think if you want more pigment, you're gonna need some type of velour puff. This uh, little thing is great for touch-ups on the go. I just personally wouldn't use it to do my original set down, but I like that it's in there. I appreciate that and it is a really beautiful um, little uh, sponge, I would say, and I do like the microfiber feel of it. it reminds me kind of the uh, Make It Forever ones. But I do, like I said, think this is a perfect on the go palette. And I do appreciate the fact that you can apply it with a brush or a sponge or some type of velour puff and you are getting a really nice smooth application. So I'm gonna give application a four out of five just because it didn't deliver enough pigment for me personally. As far as the finish and wear, how long it wore throughout the day, the finish I got out of it, does it give me that airbrush effect like it claimed? I don't think it gave me as much airbrush as I had hoped for with those micro spherical powders in there. I was hoping that I was gonna get more of that blurring effect. I think it was blurring, but not to the degree of Charlotte Tilbury or Chantecaille. And for my personal preferences, this is not a powder that I liked as much to set down my concealer. I would still continue utilizing my one size. So if you like the one size powder, this is not gonna be a powder that you'll appreciate as much as others to set down your concealer. But again, that is all preference. So please keep that in mind. 
This is a sheer translucent powder. It's almost like using a very loose powder, but all over your skin in a more pressed formula. So just keep that in mind. You're not gonna get that pigment you would get from the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder. And that is the biggest difference is you're not getting that little extra coverage that you might want, or you might not want that. And that's where this powder is really gonna be a benefit to you. So as far as absorbing oil and all of that, I don't have oily skin, so I'm not the best person to say that but as far as my fine lines it did settle into my fine lines a little I don't think again it gave me that staying power like the Charlotte Tilbury does so I am gonna give finish and wear a four out of five I don't think it was horrible I just don't think it was amazing and then as far as the packaging goes oh my gosh you guys the packaging is absolutely stunning some of the best pressed powder packaging I've ever seen it really truly is I like how thin it is. I like how light it is. I like that it looks beautiful. I do like the applicator uh, that it came with. I think it is really nice for those touch-ups on the go. I like that you can travel with this. You can't pop this one out, so uh, you are you will have to repurchase another one. That price point, $57, is a little high, but it is hourglass, and we kind of expect that from them. I hate to say that, but that's just where we are at this point. So I'm gonna give packaging a solid five out of five. As far as the shade range goes, I do think medium is a really beautiful shade if you're using it all over your face. If you're a twinsy to me, that is a perfect shade. If you're using it for under your eyes and you want brightening, medium is not gonna be the shade for you. I would go a little bit lighter if you're my skin tone or lighter especially. So this isn't one I would personally use under my eye. It just is not gonna, like I mentioned earlier, it's just not for me on that. But for all over the face and for touch-ups, the medium worked out really beautiful. I wasn't that big of a fan of the deep shade. I was hoping it was a little bit more neutral warm, not so orange. It was pulling orange as I was applying it and I didn't care for that. So I am gonna give shade range a four out of five. As far as repurchasing goes, I don't foresee myself repurchasing this product. It's just not a powder that I will reach for. I have too many other powders that I love so much. I can't see myself reaching for this and it didn't quite blow my mind and that's just me that's just me personally so we're looking at a total glam score of 20 out of 25 this is definitely not going to rank within the top five of my powders if that gives you guys any indication of where i'm at now if this was a powder you absolutely love then please keep using it love it there's a powder out there for everyone you guys there's makeup out there for everyone we all have again individual preferences and skin types as well so just please keep that in mind let's take a look at where it did rank in my setting powders and I'm talking about loose and pressed this is not as high as I had hoped it would be I thought it would be literally up there around the number one spot and it just didn't hang there Charlotte Tilbury is still my number one setting powder and I'm talking about all over the face and then obviously Chantecai is up there you guys they just truly have a magical blurring powder on their hands whether it's the perfect blur powder and i do recommend that one even over this hourglass one because the one i use the pressed powder is more of a powdered foundation i don't consider it a powder foundation because i don't think there's that much pigment to it to make it like a makeup forever type hd skin velvet powder but if you don't like a lot of powder then the perfect blur powder from chantecai is amazing and both both cruelty free brands but to me you pay the price for that it is truly blurring and then as far as like loose powders Sicily is gonna be up there for me I think it really truly delivers such a beautiful blur to the skin especially if you like loose powder type formulas one size is obviously up there that is my number one under eye setting powder you guys know that and I wouldn't use this powder over the one size I would continue if you have one size and I know I got some of you on that continue using that one because I do think that is a much better under eye uh, setting powder, in my opinion. Again, these are just my opinions, so please don't get mad at me, don't come for me in the comments. This is just what I personally like, and everyone's gonna be different, like I said. I'm not a big fan of using powdered foundations, like this one size is a powdered foundation. I'm not a big fan of using those as bronzers. They're just too pigmented. Unless you're, uh, like you guys know, I love the Charlotte Tilbury. This is another one, there we go. That's probably the best comparison. I would use this one over the hourglass one. Again, for 
uh, I can't talk for bronzers. So that's just my thoughts on it. I know it's a lot of word verbiage right there, but there's a lot going on here. And I want you guys to know my honest to goodness thoughts on it, especially if it comes back in stock and some of you still want to pick it up. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to pick up the, the bronzer shade anymore. Like that's, that's it for me, but I will be testing out the medium again. So Keep your eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't go anywhere because I am gonna give you that seven day wear test. But if you are new here before you go, please remember to hit that subscribe button, click the post notification bell, join our beautiful glam fam. We're here every week and we just love for you to become part of our family. And if you did like this video, please give it a huge thumbs up when you guys hit the like button and comment below. As always, it really does help push my videos up through the algorithm. I do upload shorts Monday through Wednesday, sometimes Wednesday through Friday. It kind of alters, but it's usually around noon. So definitely check that out. And I also post reels on Instagram. So please do follow me and you can follow me on TikTok and my other social accounts. Check out my website, christyallure.com. Be sure to check out that video next and I will see you guys on the seven day wear test. All right, you guys, so we're on the seven day mark and I have to say, I'm starting to like this powder a little bit more. It's not my favorite one, but I actually feel like I can add this into my rotation today. I put it over my Maybelline skin tint and I just lightly brushed it. I didn't press it in with the Velour Puff. I just used a brush and I like it more that way. So it's just finding ways and you never know, our skin just changes. Like I said, with the Vanish concealer, I didn't like that one. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't love it at first. And now it's my number one concealer. So you just never know, things change, but that's why I like to do these seven day wear test updates to let you guys know how it's working out. So I definitely like it much better. I think I might even like the light a little bit more than the medium, but we'll have to see. So just wanted to give you guys an update and I will see you guys on the next video. Love you guys, bye.